In 2021 budget, President Buhari increases allocation to National Assembly and Defense gets a court. What's the implication of that? And INEC responds to the concerns of the PDP on its choice of chief returning officer ahead of Wondo state governorship election. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeinde. Welcome, this is Blocks Politics, and let's look at the issues we're talking about tonight. President Muhammadu Buhari has increased the allocation for the National Assembly in the 2021 budget by 3 billion naira when compared to previous years. The president allocated 128 billion naira, a rise on the 125 billion naira budgetary allocation in previous years. The 2021 budget for the Ministry of Defense was put at 840.56 billion naira against 878.4 billion naira budgeted for 2020 with 121 billion earmarked for capital projects. A total of 227.02 billion naira has been budgeted for the Ministry of Interior while 441.39 billion naira for the Ministry of Police Affairs. Joining us to make sense of this is uh, Onye Kachi, um, who is going to be giving us insight. He's a security expert. He's going to be telling us more about what defense budget is all about. Good evening, Mr. Onye Kachi. Yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, uh, good evening to the viewers. Yeah, good to have you. Now, the cry out there, and probably the sensation behind that story, is the fact that um, there has been so much cry, there's been so much tantrums thrown at the government over the cost of governance, by extension, the National Assembly. And now we felt the issue of security is not getting better. So what's the rationale? What do you think should be the rationale behind federal government reducing the budget of what we have this year as against that of last year? Um, firstly, um, I think the person who wears the shoe knows where it pinches him the most. And then perhaps uh, we would all be given the opportunity to present this question to Mr. President himself um, to perhaps unravel uh, the decision-making process that arrived at that reduction. Uh, but from what we know and from what we can see, uh, in 2019, uh, the budget for defense spending was about 450 something billion. Um, it was increased last year to, uh, sorry, uh, this year to about 880 something billion. Uh, actual capital release uh, from the Ministry of uh, Finance record to date shows um, a release of about 770 something billion. I think 774 billion thereabouts. Uh, so if the government has made a budget of about 840 billion for next year, uh, why it does look as though budgeted looks somewhat re reduced, uh, it's fair to say that perhaps if, if you do 700 something billion this year and you then do actual 840 billion, there's no uh, Real reduction, and I'm and I speak in real terms, not in nominal terms. Uh, perhaps also, if you if if we had bothered to look at the budget assumptions, the president had laid out uh, some set constraints uh, to acknowledge first the the health crisis uh, caused by the global pandemic COVID-19, the resulting microeconomic headwinds. Uh, and the fall in, the continued fall in oil prices are uh, some of the uh, uh, revenue constraints uh, that the government has had to work with in addressing some of the uh, uh, nagging problems that we have in the country. Uh, for those of us who have some bit of understanding to how these things work, that a sum is budgeted doesn't mean you actually get that same sum released. Every 
MDA uh, chief or maybe uh, uh, staff of any of the forces also have to go cap in hand. Everybody has to go cap in hand to the Ministry of Finance to try and see as much as what they can get uh, because truly we are in uh, big trouble in this country. We are just putting up a, a smiling face. Even the 2021 budget assumptions um, shows that we are projecting to generate 5.7 trillion in revenue. And um, the remaining part of that budget will be deficit funded by uh, borrowing. And some other part of the budget will go into also debt servicing. Uh, the government has touted that uh, debt to GDP is about 3.5%. But if you look at it in actual terms, um, debt to revenue, it's almost about 40 something percent, which is unsustainable. So uh, beyond all this um, cry of um, National Assembly defense spending, we have a bigger problem. Um, uh, time it was in Nigeria when uh, we had money and spending the money was a problem. Right now, there is, uh, we have a bigger fish to fry. There is no money. There is no sense um, of clear direction of where this money will come from. We are almost playing the hoping game, hoping that somehow um, crude oil will rise to about $70 per barrel, and perhaps we can see some windfalls uh, go into the uh, excess revenue account, and maybe we get a bit of a breather from there. Uh, but those of us who are tracking uh, macroeconomic conditions, particularly after a global uh, pandemic like COVID-19, uh, you seem to know from even empirical evidence that it will take the global economy minimum of three to four years to recover. So uh, I think we have a bigger problem on our hands. Okay. And um, 2021, um, it doesn't look like it's going to be rosy for anybody and not anyone in government. So okay. uh, there's, a, there's a clear problem, uh, uh, revenue shortage, and maybe at the surface level, that explains some of the constraints. Okay. If you want me to go deeper into the analysis we'll, and show we'll, you the real we'll, problem, I'll be happy to oblige. We'll, we will try and uh, stay away too much with the economics, but we'll just strictly look at the fence uh, because we too... No, 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 I get no, you. What I mean you is... See, you, see, you see, sorry to cut you, I, I do apologize, but you see, you cannot talk security without talking economics. I because agree. Because without I was going to explain security, to you, there can be no economics. And without I'll, economics... You can't also was, have security. Excuse me, security uh, Mr. Yekachi Adekoya, what I meant, I permit uh, me to explain to you. What I meant is we discussed this at lunch yesterday. We broke down the budget and we brought uh -huh. in economies, which I think you're also qualified to be called one, even though we introduced you as a security expert. But we are just wondering, as laymen, to look at um, the, the mathematics. We had... Uh, about 10 trillion naira budget last 2020. We have 13 trillion naira, you know, projection in 2021. And so why should security come down? We could understand that health had some kind of increase. It is expected. We expect to consolidate based on the COVID issue. But we just felt, what is health? What is every other thing if the security is not fixed? Over time, we know that security gets a large chunk. But we are just wondering, is it that they've acquired the weapons needed? Is it that uh, they've got in some of those things they said they were going to buy? Why do we have that decrease? That seems to be our worry here. You see, we are very far from um, um, resourcing the military as we should. Um, and if, you, if we do a Naira to dollar comparison, we are going to be spending far less and having more problems even in 2021, because with population expansion, you have more problems on our hands. Um, quick, quick, quick analysis. Um, I think if you look at what they call the recurrent expenditure, which the, the government seems to suggest will go up about 2.2 trillion, um, is also predicated on the 2019 national security strategy in which the government um, had said they would predicate the approach to security on the principles of human security. Now, um, breaking that further, you talk about education, health, access to amenities, um, improved standard of living, lifting over 100 million people out of poverty. 
so the government uh, in the budget itself had, um, by budgetary principles, allocated 2.2 trillion uh, to um, that national security approach called human security, in which education is about 500 and something billion, health is about 300 and something billion, Ministry of Police Affairs is about 200 and something billion, um, defense is about 840 billion, Ministry of Interior is about, um, about yeah, 200 and something, then Ministry of Police Affairs about 440 billion. Now, on actual spend on security, we are projected to spend about 1.5 trillion thereabouts on security in 2021. The truth is, those departments and arms of government will not see that 100% allocation because of budgetary constraints. And even at that paltry sum allocated, Nigeria is estimated to spend, for example, on defense. We will be spending about 2,000 uh, 500 per Nigerian on defense. On policing, we'll be spending about 1,700 per Nigeria on policing. Uh, on health, the same amount. So you see, uh, now you look at the protests, the inside pro protests, the armed banditry in the Northwest, the killings and the expansion of the terrorist um, activities in the Northeast. And the continued clashes between farmer headers. Uh, the fact that the, you also look at the microeconomic headwinds, which are also fueling insecurity, because there's a level of, um, there's spent of aggression, um, there's some level of uncertainty in the minds of the people. Um, there are youths out of jobs, some four or five years without jobs. People are beginning to turn to crime. And if you look at the ease with which Boko Haram is recruiting in the Northeast, Boko Haram actually pays those fighters a salary, give them a sense of belonging, and uh, they collect tax, amongst other things which they do there. So Boko Haram is positioning itself as an alternative source of governance to the people, alternative source of social amenity, bridging the gap in those large or governed spaces, and pro providing some sense of direction, some funny sense of direction to some people who almost are directionless in those open and ungoverned spaces. So the problem we face, I agree, is quite steep, entrenched, and it's not going anywhere, not anytime soon. Uh, so the, the spend on security should be going up. But the question is, where would the money come from? And that's the question we must all answer. Uh, if you even look at the policing structure, the federal government is running an unsustainable approach to policing in Nigeria. We all agree that every approach to crime must be local. Uh, but when you have a federal government that is insisting on providing a federal central police for a, 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 size, uh, a size of Nigeria that has over 774 local governments um, with growing and expanding security concerns, we will continue to see situations where the, 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 the military, the police will continue to drop the ball as the center of attention um, um, accentuates away from Abuja down to the remote villages. So um, we have a big problem, I agree. But the bigger problem is how to source and secure funds. There is no sense whatsoever in reducing security spend. However, some economists argue. And I, by the way, I'm an economist by first degree. Um, argue that perhaps government may need to dump some assets um, government may need to also reduce the size of governance. We are almost going to spend 5.6 trillion on recurrent expenditure in this country. So we are on a path that is not sustainable. And for you to give attention to security, you must spend money. And government, we argue, because what we are talking about is what we call securematics. We are looking at the mathematics of security and what has to be done to enable proper security that also enables economic prosperity and development. So the maths of security currently as a stacked up now in Nigeria doesn't make any sense. And, and, and government cannot continue to play the ostrich when it comes to the matter of security. Uh, it is agreed that the primary responsibility of, of government is to provide safety and security for people and for life and property also. But more importantly, government must provide a conducive environment 
that would catalyze development and growth. So some of us begin to argue, listen, there are some NDAs that are senseless. Basically, I mean, with due respect also, there are some expenditures that have no basis. Recruitment patterns that are just um, wanton waste. There's wanton waste in the federal civil service structure, the MDAs, the ministries, the, the, the bloated uh, legislative structure we have, even down to the local government level. Uh, we need to become more efficient so that we can give good attention to the areas that need serious attention. And I'll round up with this thought, please. Um, without the state government spending money on security, without the state government spending money on the Nigerian police, we would not have a semi or semi-functioning police as we have today. The structure will have totally collapsed because when you deal with security, at the back of delivering the front-end service, you are looking at logistical issues, logistical okay. supports, fueling, um, okay. uh, Mr. Decoya. Uh, vehicle, maintainers, uh, maintaining a good fleet, even the issues of munitions, the issues of body armor and kitting. When you see some of the issues we have with federal SARS and these people dressed okay, in Mr. Decoya, let's, when they let's, provided, let's run, uh, when they provide their kits. Yes, go ahead. Let's, let's try and maximize a uh, few times that we have because it's obvious that... Uh, uh, thank God I never knew about this, that you are even first an economist <laughs> before, you, before we look at the security part of you. But still yeah. looking at that, some will remind us about the past. You know, you recall what happened uh, 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 when this administration came in and we saw the massive revelations of how the security chiefs were, uh, part of my language, were cornering the money. So sometimes it's not the huge figure we see. What exactly, how is this money being distributed should be another source of concern. Good Probably question. government has seen some kind of leakages and they would be like, instead of this money going to some pockets, let it go to the men at the theater of war. What do you think? You see, good question. Um, the, the problem we have had in Nigeria is that we don't put square pegs in square holes. When you talk about sourcing, at the point of negotiation, people put self first over country. I'll give a case in point. We had Air Beetle um, training aircraft, which was produced in Nigeria in sometime between 1985 and 86, about 60 pieces. Nigeria's aviation sector was poised to be one of the global um, leaders in aviation as far back as 85, 86. The successive checkered history we had with the military um, saw our aviation and naval sector, uh, maritime sector, suffer a lot because people decided to put first before country. When you come to equipment sourcing, the, these people come from all over the world, uh, different nationals. They speak big, fancy English. They make fancy, colorful presentation before those who have the responsibility to procure these weapons. They confuse, confuse them or convince them or collude with some of them. Um, I do hope we still have some men of good, uh, good character. To such an extent that when the end user get the final equipment, it's completely useless. You, you, you have, we've had cases of uh, battalion commanders, people in the theater of war complaining about obsolete useless weapons sent to them. So yes, I agree. There are issues of corruption, but the sad truth is that a country can't run itself. A country has to run through people. So mm -hmm. I think we ourselves are our greatest problem, even the, with the issues of security. Because when you look at some of the monies being allotted for equipment, and you compare those costs with what other countries are paying for same equipment, even more advanced, and you see what we are paying for in Nigeria, you will weep for this country. Okay, so there's, there's yes, I agree. There's a lot of um, rot in the system. And even what we have, if properly managed, you know, would have at least been able to make some difference on the ground. So clearly, yes, I agree that in terms of contracting and sourcing of equipment, there's a problem. Now, the bigger problem I find, and um, I was speaking to a senior, a retired uh, military officer uh, who was trying to convince me that this has changed. The bigger problem is competency. 
when you go into a negotiation room, you want to buy advanced military equipment. What is your level of knowledge and expertise and competence to be able to sit on that table to negotiate on behalf of the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? If, if competence is mismatched and the skills tip in balance of the other side who is supplying, I mean, people will speak fancy English and dump things that don't work at, at your desk and you would not be able to do anything. So there's also a lot of waste. And we have been calling on the government. Listen, they are security experts in the private sector. We also have a, a, a defense industry that can employ millions of Nigeria, also put Nigeria on the right footing. We've, we've gone ahead and signed the um, EFCTA agreement, but we are coming to the table with almost nothing. Defense spending is big. Our defense spending is um, still a far cry from GDP. There's, there's great opportunity to export defense technology in Africa. We call ourselves the giant of Africa, and we are doing nothing to even catalyze our defense spending in Nigeria here. So the bulk of the dollars we spend goes outside, and it fuels nothing okay. inside. And it brings us to a point where our negotiating power is very low. Mr. If you're going to buy technology, buy technology Mr. like Israel. When Israel buys technology, they give you the specs of the upgrade they want okay. and what they need those technology to do, and they negotiate very hard. And even when they acquire those assets, they are able to also build on it some specification, okay. specification that fits their local Mr. Dekoya, So we me, have a lot of problem in sourcing. Let me just take this... Let me just take this last question. Uh, I can see that uh, you require more time to really do bigger <laughs> justice to this discussion. But it's there's quite, a, there's uh, a problem, that's it's, why. It's, it's quite insightful. But finally, uh, what led to this uh, discourse, what led to this topic, is the fact that the National Assembly has an increased budget, which for many people, they felt that's uh, being pol politically correct. And what affects you and I, what affects every man on the street that has to do with security, irrespective of your location, and why should that suffer some court? But beyond that, our worry sometimes is some of these National Assembly members, you have security hags attached to them, you have these policemen that are meant to take care of good number of us, taking care of few number of people. So, Maybe it's a way of robbing Peter to pay Paul. The money will still be spent on allowances for this security hit. So how do we overcome this irony? I'm afraid you have just one minute to help us do justice to that. Uh, I'm also more afraid that I would not be able to do justice to that in one minute. But let me just say very quickly that the joke is on the political class. And um, far too long we have kept quiet and sat back rather lazily and assume that people who are in positions of trust will do the right thing. Quite frankly, I agree with you. Um, firstly, we are part of the school of thought that feels that we should make our legislative process part-time and reduce the wastage, the one-ton wastage, because beyond that allocation, you also look at um, contract sourcing and fighting, which is why you see problems between legislature and the executives, rather than people sit down and do the business of governance legislators with oversight function on over ministries are the ones themselves pushing for contracts. So where is the check and balance, even in the structure of governance? Where is the interest of the common man? Some VIPs move about with a, a, a retinue of police that is equal to or more than what some division police stations have. Hmm. Uh, you know, so they can't care so much about we, the people, uh, the common people. So I, I think that um, the joke is on them. And I, and I do hope that we can conscientize people enough to, to get to a point where we begin to ask very tough questions of those in leadership. We must see sincerity of purpose in everything that is done. We can get more from what we are spending, but um, I'm afraid uh, the, the, the right level and quality of leadership is lacking in, in Nigeria as, as things stand today. I wish, uh, I wish, I wish, I wish that this conversation will continue. But you can continue on all our social media platforms, the YouTube, the Instagram, on our Instagram page, the Twitter. This is quite insightful. This is something that you can get started. Let's begin to ask those tough questions. What is this budget meant for? When are we going to get involved in the budget uh, issues that has to do with you and I? 
These are issues that Mr. Oyekachi Adikoya has raised. Thank you so much for your time. Mr. Oyekachi Adikoya, I think I like your name, Oyekachi Adikoya. Don't worry, we'll find out very soon when we have you again on the mystery behind no your name. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break where we'll bring you a report. But when we return, PDP calls out INEC for his choice of returning officer for the Ondo State. We'll be right back.